Greetings, friends in Christ. This is Pastor Holly Norwick, and I am delighted to be worshiping with you this beautiful Sunday morning. This Sunday is another wonderful Sunday that we will gather around the communion table together. So if you haven't already, please take a moment and go and designate something to eat and something to drink to have for communion as we celebrate together across this beautiful community, across this country, maybe even across the world. So go and get your communion items and come back and let us open our hearts and our minds for worship today through music. Please join me in the welcome. Peace be with you and also with you. Jesus is the good shepherd and now we have been called to feed his sheep. join me in the call to worship. We gather together to worship God, the shepherd of our souls, the one who has created us, who sustains us, who redeems us, who walks beside us in good times and in bad. Jesus has called each of us by name. He has called us as sheep to follow his familiar voice, rely on his staff and walk closely by his side. Jesus now sends each of us out, transforming us from sheep to the ones who feed his lambs. As ones who have been lovingly and gently tended, we now go out to the world to feed, lead, and love. Please pray with me. Praise be to God, shepherd of all. We come today in your image to grow from being your sheep to becoming shepherds ourselves. Give us the courage to take responsibility for one another's safety, to be present in the pain of others, to feed the hungry, strengthen to we the weak, and respite the wanderer. Good Shepherd, teach us how to be good shepherds as well. Amen. <laughs>
kids, have you ever made a mistake? Like maybe you even put your shoes on the wrong feet or you accidentally put your shirt on inside out? Those are small mistakes, but sometimes people make big mistakes. Sometimes people think that their mistakes make Jesus not love them anymore. But in today's lesson, we are going to learn that that is not true. Let's learn from a story about the disciples. Jesus appeared to his disciples while they were fishing. So let's back up a little bit. Before the disciples met Jesus, most of them were fishermen. Then they met Jesus and followed him around and learned from him when he taught and performed miracles. Then eventually Jesus died on the cross for our sins and rose again. And that's where our story picks up now. The disciples didn't know where Jesus was, so they went fishing, but there was a problem. The disciples weren't catching any fish. So Jesus stood on the shore and told them to try fishing on the other side of the boat. When they did, they caught more fish than they could hold. But more importantly, Peter recognized that it was Jesus. So he jumped out of the boat and swam to the shore. And all of the disciples followed him. And when they got there, Jesus was cooking them breakfast. I bet Jesus makes the best pancakes. Mm-hmm. Jesus taught his disciples one more lesson. Kids, do you remember when Peter denied Jesus three times? Well, Jesus sure remembered, and he wanted to teach Peter something important. So he asked him the same question three times. Do you love me? And each time, Peter said, of course I do. He probably felt that Jesus was trying to make him feel bad for denying him. But each time Peter said yes, Jesus told him to feed his sheep. Well, Jesus didn't mean actual sheep. He was talking about telling people about him and his death and resurrection. So kids, here's the lesson that Peter learned and that we can learn too. Jesus gives everyone second chances. Even though Peter messed up big time, Jesus forgave him and gave him the most important mission of all, memory verse. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Kids, even when we make mistakes, Jesus forgives us and wants to use us. That's why Jesus died on the cross, to wipe out our mistakes and sins. So kids, next time you make a mistake, think of the story of Peter. And remember, Jesus will never give up on you. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Today's Old, Old Testament reading is from the book of Psalms, chapter 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Here ends the reading.
our gospel lesson this morning is found in the book of John, chapter 21, verses 13 through 17. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Jesus reinstates Peter. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Here ends the reading. I'm sure many of us are familiar with what is known in the Bible as the Great Commissioning. These are the last words that Jesus told his disciples at the end of the Gospel of Matthew when he says, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Has anyone ever heard this before? It is a charge ushered to the church as a whole to invite all people closer to God and find communion with one another here on earth. And as much as I love this commissioning, this is not the only commissioning that Jesus offers in his last words to his disciples. Today, we read the Gospel of John and we hear a slightly different commissioning from Jesus, one that I think is much more profound than it might appear. Perhaps the most wonderful part of it is that it is ushered in tandem with Peter's restoration. I would like to pay very close attention to what is happening here at this impromptu campfire breakfast that Jesus is having. Here, Jesus reveals himself again to the disciples, this time by Lake Galilee. And it's because of this that the significance emerges as the disciples are fishing on Lake Galilee. And because of this, it tells us that since the crucifixion and even since Christ's last appearance to them behind locked doors in that upper room, it seems like the disciples might have given up hope and, and completely gone home, gone back to their previous lives and jobs. Lake Galilee, my friends, is about 80 miles from Jerusalem, where Jesus had last appeared to them. The disciples had traveled 80 miles home in between these two appearances. That was no short distance in that time, as you might remember. And they were not hanging around Jerusalem very long, even after Jesus appeared to them, wondering what was next. The disciples, in their desolation, had dispersed too. They weren't all together here. It's only a few of them that Jesus is having breakfast with. And so, when Jesus appears to the disciples, he is appearing to a broken and vulnerable group of men who had no sense of hope for the future. The disciples, 
like us, desperately in need of a fresh start with God, desperately in need of finding value and worth and a sense of identity to know that they are loved and that their lives are worth something, feeling as if they need to start all over again. And here, at the crack of dawn, Jesus stands on the beach, but the disciples do not recognize him. They are about a hundred yards or so away, and the interaction between them begins. It's one of the most beautiful interactions in scripture, in my opinion. A conversation that shows the absolute grace of Christ. Just listen to how Jesus begins this conversation before this encounter. He says, children, you have no fish, do you? The word Jesus uses to address them is children, not men or friends or brothers. He calls them children. He knows how much they are hurting. He knows how much they need to be met with love. And so he calls them his children, an indication of the depth of love and sense of protection that he has over them. Jesus is restoring them. And then Jesus tells them to put their nets on the other side of the boat and they will catch fish there. And sure enough, when they follow Jesus' instructions, their nets fill up. Here Jesus is leading them toward recognition beginning from the heart. Remember, he had helped them in this way before. The story where he tells them to push the boat out further and deeper and then let down your nets. And when they do, they catch so much fish that their nets begin to break. And that moment is when he called the disciples on the outset. He is being so gentle with them, even after all of their failure during Passion Week, after they had run away, after they had given up hope. Here, Jesus is meeting them with the same way he met them on day one, doing the same thing that introduced them to him. As if to say, do you remember how it was before all of this mess happened? It can be like that again. Let's start fresh. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's start together. I forgive you and I still need you. In the act of great mercy, Christ is restoring them. It is at this point that John recognizes Jesus and shouts, it is the Lord. At that point, Simon Peter, the ever impetuous disciple, jumps out of the boat and gets to Jesus, leaving the other guys with the rest of the work to do. And when they all get back to land, they find Jesus and Peter sitting around a campfire. The last time Jesus and Peter were together near a campfire was when Peter was sitting by the fire at the courts when Jesus was being interrogated and denied Jesus three times. After the rooster crow, Jesus looked directly at Peter. And now here again, sitting together by a fire, Jesus looking directly at Peter again with no judgment in his eyes. He sits and he looks at Peter with nothing but compassion and loving kindness. Jesus is restoring them. So they sit down together and they eat and Jesus gave them bread. How reminiscent would that have been for the disciples of the last time that Jesus broke bread with them there at the Last Supper, where the denials and the betrayals and the cowardice all began. But here, Jesus is sitting with them again, sharing bread with them, still offering hospitality, still serving them, still loving them. Jesus is restoring them. It is so important to dive into these moments of restoration before we hear Jesus commissioning because it demonstrates that, that no one, and I mean no one, is beyond God's restoration. No one is too far gone or too far out of reach to be used by God and loved by God. We see this is his interaction with Peter, especially 
his restoration. After mending his relationship with Peter, after offering forgiveness for everything, after acknowledging the rift and healing it in the most gentle and intimate way, Jesus built Peter back up, giving him a new start and a new foundation to be the foundation of the church in the future. And then Jesus, Jesus commissions him just as gently and intimately as he did for him. And here is where the conversation intertwines with the restoration. We hear, when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. So he said to them, feed my lambs. Jesus asks him a question first. One that might seem silly or even obvious, but an important one. Peter, do you love me? It is clear by Peter's reaction to Jesus that Jesus is loved by Peter, even through all of the betrayal and all of the denial. It was always clear that it was never an act of hate. It was motivated always by fear. And fear makes people do things that we would never otherwise do. The Greek word used here is to impart a first piece of commissioning translated as little lambs. Lambs are the most vulnerable pieces of a sheep herd. Jesus makes no mistake ever that children take priority with him. Let the little children come to me, we hear him call over and over again. And the disciples had not been very tolerant of children or other marginalized folks for that matter during Jesus' ministry. Jesus spent a good deal of time trying to teach them and the crowds compassion on those who don't receive compassion. The people who are unseen need to be seen, to love all of God's children, especially the ones that society asks us not to. Here, Jesus is commanding them to feed the youngest, most vulnerable, marginalized people. And so it is here with us also, church. We live in a society that prioritizes some and ostracizes so many others. Jesus knew that that was coming. He knew that the systematic isms that were present in that culture would grow and worsen even into ours. People would continue to go hungry, be without a home, become unseen or even demonized, even have their very breath squeezed out of them. Feed my lambs. A second time, Jesus asks him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And so he said, tend my sheep. Here, the Greek word for tend denotes all of the offices included in that of a shepherd. Guiding, guarding and protecting, and folding. Jesus tells Peter, we must guide his sheep. Now, this means different things for different people. For me, my commissioning to guide a sheep has turned into a call of pastoral ministry. Some tend and guide through music, uh, some through hospitality. The church is called to tend to the needs of God's people through worship and service, through study and prayer. We were created to be a people who come around each other and be a community one another needs for both faith and life. This is what we need to be able to guard and protect as shepherds do. And as a strong people of faith, we are called to guard and protect not just one another, but all of God's people. We must be persistent in offering protection, but also we must recognize where guarding and protecting is needed the very most. These past two weeks have been a devastating reminder that we must do better at protecting God's people. We failed to protect George Floyd in so many ways. 
We failed to mitigate a system that is riddled with racism. We failed to respond incident after incident of injustice. We failed to intercede as a man pressed down so long and so hard on another human being that his very breath the breath that God breathed into him was taken away and he was killed. We stood there. We watched it happen. We filmed it. We stood by and watched it unfold. It was one of many of our weakest moments in humanity. The only glimmer of hope that I have in that is that I have been restored to do better, just as this scripture has taught me. The very restoration that Jesus offered Peter after Peter so completely failed him. In my shame, Jesus restores me. He leads me back in the most gentle of ways and reminds me why he loves me in the first place. We can still guard and we can still protect and we must do so. And we also need folding. Folding, my friends, is bringing together and re-bringing together the sheep. Jesus knew the need that we would have for the coming together as people of faith in, in worship, in fellowship, in service, in response, in unity. We are all called to continue to pay close attention to one another, to invite one another into the fold or back into God's fold, to notice when someone is not here or having a hard time, to be aware of one another, to be attentive to one another's needs and absences. Jesus says, tend my sheep. Then Jesus said to Peter a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. So Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. This third opportunity given to Peter to reaffirm his love for Jesus Three times Peter denied Jesus. Now, three times he has demonstrated, proclaimed his love for Jesus. No matter how great our faith might be, we will fall down. But God's grace and forgiveness will continue to create space for us to get back up again and remember our relationship with God, one that is all loving, all forgiving, all eternal. And now Jesus gives Peter a third command, feed my sheep. First, he said to feed my lambs. Then we are to tend his sheep and now feed my sheep. We must be careful not to get caught up in tending flock before we feed them. I'm not referring to actual food, as you can imagine, but the food that Jesus taught us about. Man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. In order to feed Jesus lambs, to tend Jesus sheep, we must continue to replenish ourselves. We must stay nourished on scripture and strengthened in our relationship with God. We must have a strong foundation in order to have the courage to rely on God to go out and be the church. It is not an easy call. We are asked to stand against complacency. We are called to see people made in the image of God, all people. We are asked to be strong. We are asked to be countercultural. We are asked to be faithful and prayerful in all that we do, to portray God's love in every aspect of our lives. This, this, my friends, is the great commissioning from Jesus. And the best news of all is that each and every one of us has been equipped for this call. No matter what we have done or what we have failed to do, Jesus gently calls us toward him the same way he did for Peter and restores us over 
and over again. Jesus looks you in the eyes, looks me in the eyes, and he says, I love you. I forgive you. I am with you. Now go and take care of my sheep. Go and love one another. Go and take care of one another. Go and forgive one another. Have compassion on one another. Show kindness and tolerance and patience toward one another. Share hospitality. Protect one another. Stand up for one another. Protect the very breath that God has given us. Be the church. After all our sin and betrayal, after all our denying him in our thoughts, our words, our actions, and our non-actions, after all the cowardice we have all shown through our lives of faith, after all of our apathy and discipleship, after all that, Jesus meets us exactly where we are and says, I love you. I need you go and be the church. Jesus is restoring us. We come to the very end of this incredible encounter between Jesus and Peter, and the closing words are this. Then Jesus said to him, follow me. The ultimate act of reconciliation and restoration. Jesus finally brings Peter back to the beginning, right where they began in the original calling almost three years prior to come and follow me. And on that day, Jesus commissioned these fishermen again with the words, follow me. Jesus recommissioned the same fishermen with these same words. Jesus restored Peter. Jesus has restored us. Jesus has echoed the same call again, follow me. And so it is with us today. Our past sins and failings have been forgiven and forgotten. This is a new moment, a new beginning, a brand new commissioning. Jesus has restored us and the call goes out. He asks each and every one of us today, feed my sheep. Will you protect? Will you guard? Will you feed? Will you tend? Will you do what God asks you to do in moments of fear and doubt? Will we come back and learn from what we didn't do and do it right this time? Will we be restored, re-energized and go back out? As we all sit around the campfire with Jesus and been ushered one more chance to be his church. My friends, join me. We will go and feed his sheep. Amen.
Please pray with me. Good shepherd, we, your sheep, are calling out to you. We have wandered so far, and we are hearing your voice and looking for your staff. Guide us back to be the church you have called us to be. In this time of adaptation, when we have jumped on to virtual worship and, and made big strides in moving closer to you, even in this unfamiliar place, we are reminded of how far we have yet to go when we watch one of your little sheep crushed. God, forgive us for our non-action. Teach us how to become your church to protect to guide, to come around, to support, to stand up for, to feed, to love, to live alongside all of your sheep. We have been restored. Use us in all the ways that you have called us to be your church. And as we begin this brand new restored reconciled journey, we begin in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>
Friends, it is that sacred time, that time where we gather around God's table of mercy, God's table of love, God's table of communion. During this sacred time, I invite you to use the elements that you have gathered at the start of this worship and bless them along with me as we partake in the Lord's Supper together. Peace be with you and also with you. We have been invited personally to this meal. God is good and his love endures forever. Holy are you, God of all creation, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Yearning for us to know you, he came to earth to be with us. Longing for reconciliation between you and your people, he became the broken bread of life. Aching for our release from the agony of sin and death, he suffered on the cross so that we may be made whole. This so that all may gather around this table today. When we stand around your table, we witnessed firsthand the depth of your love for us. As we approach your place, our place at the table, all hurtful words grow silent and divisions melt away. We sit side by side while hope and grace become our closest friends. So draw us in one by one as one people of God. Join me in the words of invitation. The table is set, the time is right, your meal like no other claims us. We are called to God's table of love prepared for all people. The table of Christ is long and it has many chairs. There is plenty of room here. It is the table where love is in charge of the guest list and reservations are not required. Come, approach God's table of love, grace, and mercy. We come with open hands and open hearts. Come, just as God made you. For the gifts of grace are free. Come, for all things are ready. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this as often as you eat of it in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup and after they had supped, he poured it out for them. And he said, this is a covenant sealed in my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. At this time, please partake in communion with me. Please pray with me. Thanks be to you, O God, for the blessings of this table. Because of your eternal love for us, nations gather around one table of faith and are fed of one body and one cup. 
Let the peace of God and the comfort in our future with God rest our minds and our hearts. And now, nourished with grace and love, may we go forth to serve you, abounding in hope, strengthened by peace, overflowing with joy and tenacious in love. bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he look upon you with favor and strengthen us to feed his sheep. Amen. Good morning, friends. Thank you again for worshiping with us here at the Old White Church this Sunday morning. I wanted to share with you that the Old White Church is in an even bigger transition than many of our other sister churches during this pandemic. The Old White Church, in just a few short weeks, will be calling an interim pastor to come and begin a new journey with them. An interim pastor is a pastor that comes after the current settled pastor, which is me, departs and a new settled pastor begins their search. So as this new interim comes in, I will make my departure from the Old White Church here in Swansea. It has been the most remarkable ministry here, and I love each and every one of you and the moments we have together. I'm going to ask you a favor, if you will. As the weeks come, we're leading up to that moment. I wonder if you would consider recording something for me, a message, a thanks, a memory, something that we have had together in these last eight plus years. I'd love to be able to put together a big thank you for us as a community. So please, if you have the opportunity or the interest, take a thank you recording on your phone or on your, your computer or your, or your iPad or anything that you have. If you don't have any of those things and you want to make a recording, please give the church office a call and we have people ready to help you do it everybody's voice is important right now. So please consider being part of this virtual farewell that we will be having with each other. I will miss you all, and I will relish these next few last weeks with you. Give us a call at the church and let us help make this a farewell to remember. Thank you. Mm -hmm.